Hey guys, good morning. Today I am just gonna go around my garden and deadhead a couple things that are um, pretty much spent and just kind of do an overall general cleanup of some of the flowers that have been um, blooming and are already spent. I don't want to let them go to seed so they can keep on blooming and producing flowers for me all summer long. Yesterday we had a beautiful rain storm. So today it's pretty cloudy. I'm just gonna go around, give you guys a look at some of the stuff that I'm doing. I don't know if it's any interest. Um, you know, it's very interesting to watch somebody do a cleanup, but I thought I would show you what I do on a typical day after a rain. I come out here and kind of see, I'm gonna start with the Veronica. As you can see, like the Veronica over here, um, it still has a little bit of flower at the tip but I have more flowers in other places that I'll probably leave but this one looks pretty sad because it's flopped over um, we just put in a very simple drip irrigation that my husband and I did um, we ran the drip line from that bed to this bed so we put it into um, PVC pipe so it can weather the storm a little bit better and then we're gonna have to cut this brick um, because the line's gonna have to run across over here as you can see so he's gonna have to cut this brick so that it fits right in this corner so I still have a little bit of leeway right here for the drip irrigation but in your garden it grows and the work is never done it's got like chores around your house you know laundry and cleaning the kitchen it's a continuous thing so today I thought I'd just show you how to clean this Veronica. You can see new growth coming in at the base over here. So I'm gonna do a hard pruning. You don't have to, to get a new flush of bloom, but since it's all kind of floppy, I'm gonna just clean all the way down there and then it can send up some new growth and hopefully they'll be a little bit sturdier. So basically with that, I'm gonna put the camera down here and I'm gonna come in and basically just give it a hard pruning job. Go around the base and cut it back. And you can see where there's a couple of new growth, so I'll just leave it They're a little bit longer. Um, but for the most part, just the ones that are really floppy. Um, the Pollinators still have plants that they can eat and get their nectars and pollens and whatever that they do. So I'm not too concerned about getting rid of their main source of food. Uh, this one's a little bit leggy too, but it's new growth. I'm just going to trim it back so it kind of be uniform with the rest of the new growth. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I garden in zone 8A, uh, Georgia red clay, but of course I amended this soil. Over here I have geraniums in pots. You can see the leaves in here are starting to die back, so usually I go in here, pluck those off. I put it underneath the plant. You can get rid of it if it's really diseased, but most of the time I just put the leaves underneath just to create more of a kind of like a mulching effect. Let's see, these ones are kind of spent, so you just come down here and you snap at the base. And then I just gonna put it down there. And then you can see the new growth that are coming out. Aren't they pretty? Geranium definitely does its thing in the summertime in the heat. It likes to flower and bloom. Gives you a lot of show with colors so you just come inside get all the dead leaves and just stick it underneath just to promote healthy new growth I would have actually started my cup of coffee in the morning times and then what I usually do is walk the grounds the flower look at them that's the beauty of gardening. You have your own flower shop almost, so you can come out and look at all your flower. Um, 
over here, I think I'm going to leave this Veronica just because it hasn't really flopped and it's still kind of young. Um, so I'm just going to leave it. And then over here, this is Coneflower starting to bloom. Isn't it pretty? Look at this color. Isn't that beautiful? So Coneflower is super easy and super hardy. Um, definitely one of those plants that can self-seed when the flower goes to seed. I just wait until it feels like it's completely dry. And then I pluck it off. And then I spread the seed around the garden. And then it's pretty much self-propagate, -prop pollinates or self-seeds, I guess. Um, you can see my rose standard. They are looking a little bad with all the black spots. There's just no way to prevent them. I mean, you can treat them, but it's still hard to prevent them. They just, they're more prone to it. See this one, I'm gonna deadhead this rose right here. Actually, I'm gonna do that one back there too because it's growing against my window and I don't really want that. But isn't this beautiful? Look at this flower. And you can put it in a vase. Look how pretty it is. Isn't that gorgeous? And um, this is a Miranda Lambert Rose. One of the very few that I remember the name. But it does not disappoint me every year. The color is so beautiful. I'm just going to put it on the ground. And then I'll come by and pick everything up and put it in the trash. So with the black spots issues you can come by and I'm gonna remove them so I'm putting them on the ground now but I will remove them but you don't want to just leave them uh, just because they are like a spore fungus that if you leave them they just keep on coming um, I try to you know, the standard, you'd think that it would be tall enough that it can't reach it. But for some reason, it always does. It always gets to them. I wish there was a way you can prevent them. Because they do make your plants look a little tedious. Here's another one I'm going to deadhead right there. And then I got a couple up here that are taller, but I'll leave them alone. And then I'm going to show you my love rose, which is over here. Aren't they pretty? But you can see a lot of them are spent. So usually I come down. I know there's ways of doing it, techniques of doing it, but when I do it, I just make sure that I prune to the bud that comes outward instead of inward. So I don't want it to grow inward and it doesn't always guarantee that it's gonna grow in the direction you want to but that's what you want to encourage. So if you look at this spent rose, see how there's a bud right here where the leaf come out? So that one's going inward. So it's pretty much, if I cut it here, it's gonna probably scent a growth coming this way. So I don't want to do that. I want more the one down below where it's coming out this way. So I'm gonna just cut it right here. And then hopefully the technique is that it will grow from this bud coming outward. Here is a baby rose that does not look great. I don't know what happened here. But I think I'm going to just cut it off all the way down to the base because it's kind of a puny little stem that doesn't seem to promote good growth. Here's another spent flower. So basically you can go here. So it's going to send another shoot out that way. That's where I'm going to go. And then I'm gonna leave these ones because they got another day or two left. I got some new growth over here. Let me see. How is this one looking? If... Okay, so with this one, I'm gonna cut it here because here's a new bud right here so it's gonna send it out this way and not inward. Same with this one. This one looks a little spindly though. I don't know. I'm still going to let it do its thing and maybe cut there. And then this one's going to go outward. 
here's a here's one that never took off this one looks really bad Ooh, it's really dry so since that one has a rose on it I'm just gonna deadhead it to there here's one right here this one is outward this one is inward so let's go there so I can promote that one here's this spent one um, hmm. I'm gonna go here sometimes there's really no rhyme or reason you just sometimes got to give it a good deadhead see how that flower just fell off and then you just cut it and this one looks like the flower is coming off so I'm just gonna prune it back to there and then of course I'm gonna come by and pick up all this mm. I'll go here on this one. Oh, so let me show you this little tiny one. This one I propagated from a cutting and it has given me a bloom. Super small, but it's coming alive. What I can do is cut that off so it promotes better root system, but it's got the whole summer to go, so I'm just gonna leave it. Um, here's a couple more. That I need to cut off but here's a big huge long one that flower is spent I think I'm gonna cut it here and then this is a node right here so it'll send up another shoot this way here is one that is dead so I'm gonna cut it here and then hopefully this node right here will come that way here's a couple more over here this one I'll cut it here and this one, let's cut it here so I can send it out this way. But isn't it beautiful? Look at the color. This rose is called Love Rose. It's actually two-tone if you look underneath. See how underneath of it, it's a different color? The petal underneath. But if you look at the petal from this side, of course, it's a beautiful, rich red color. These are my alliums. Look at all these bugs on here. You guys see them? I don't know what kind of bugs these are. But looks like they like sitting on top of my alliums. So the alliums are really pretty. Look at the color and the contrast. So you got some that are barely starting to flower this one all the way to ones that are flowering but isn't that cool how it starts up with the tip like the tip of it will start to color purple and then the whole entire bulb will eventually get to be like this like the tip of it isn't that pretty i really want the globe master which is the huge big ones kind of like you see in horton here's a who where he says he hears a family or a colony living inside one of those flowers. That's what it reminds me of. But isn't that cool? Just the two-tone you get. And my um, lavender is looking amazing. So I'm going to leave it there for a little while longer and then I'll come back and shear it and hopefully get a new set of growth. And then over here are more roses. I already deadheaded some. It was looking kind of bad. You can see I have a pile over here started as well. So I have these um, pink rose, which I got, and they're pretty, but they're not very showy. Um, like over here, they're just kind of like, eh. But they're roses, and, you know, I could always use more, but they're not my favorite. Like, they... I don't know they just don't wow me they don't have the wow effect and they propagate so easy so I have a whole bunch of them while I'm propagating the harder ones every rose is not easy to propagate so you just have to take extra care for the ones that takes longer and then propagate the easy ones so you can have more roses to enjoy while you wait your other ones to propagate these are sedum. Look how big they are. Isn't that crazy? And they're, like, it starts out like this, where there's no flower. 
and you can see little tiny buds right there and this is where they're starting to bloom out this one's starting to change color see them aren't they pretty they're beautiful look at my hedge of lavender you guys isn't that beautiful it makes me so happy just to look at it and this the aroma the lavender smell Oh my gosh, it is amazing. It's so intoxicating. I think I can stay in this spot and just let the breeze flow by and let the lavender dance. Look at them. Aren't they pretty? Look, bumblebee. That Xena coming down. That bumblebee is loving the lavender. And then verbena right there. They're pretty. I mean, I enjoy the verbena. They grow, the color scheme goes well with the lavender. But I'm not sure if this is the place for them because I'm still trying to grow a couple more roses along here. As you can see where it's a little bit bare, whereas you can see roses here. So I want a line of roses along here. Here's this one that's spent. So I'll come down and cut here so it promotes growth from there to come out. When there's like two roses next to each other, I just deadhead right here while the other one grow. And then I'll come back and do um, another deadhead down below. That's my hydrangea I'm training into a standard. Uh, this is salvia. Isn't the salvia pretty? Look at that rich color. It's so blue, it's almost like purple. And then yarrow. Look at this yarrow. They're floppy though, man. I get all of my um, information from YouTube. I watch Garden Answer and she is a wealth of information and knowledge. Uh, I think she said yarrow, if it flops, it might be that they're, they're in too good of a soil, which this soil is really good. I amended this whole flower bed because we have Georgia red clay, um, which isn't the best at gardening. So we actually dug up this whole entire bed and then put in um, topsoil. I'm growing sedum over there, their ground cover, just because we have uh, the gutter over there, which when it rains, it floods in Georgia. So I'm trying to promote um, good soil by not letting it get, you know, swept away. So the sedum is there to hold it in spot in its place. Um, that over there is my abutilon, abutilon. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? This is my abutilon. They're called Chinese lantern. Also known as flowering maple because of the leaves. There are different um, varieties, but this is the only one that I have. And in the South, I haven't seen any store, any nursery that has them. And I mean, you can go online and of course buy them and order them, but I like to go shop in the nursery if I can. And then whatever I can't get, I usually go into the uh, online store and I buy it from there. So I have this one right here, which I'm gonna leave because it likes to be in part shade. Um, but I propagated some more. So here's a small one right here that I propagated. This one I propagated and this one. So I might transplant this today. This is kind of my garden flower bed, but in the shadier part of the area, I use it as a propagation area as well because the soil is good. And then I wait until it gets a little bit bigger and then I transplant it out into the main flower bed over there, which has the... Um, we um, actually um, my husband rented a bobcat and then we turned the soil over here and amended it a little bit but not a lot because to bring in topsoil for this whole garden area bed is out of my price range right now so we kind of till the ground a little bit put in a little bit of compost um, and then of course put a whole bunch of mulch down over there so when a plant is well enough and big enough, I transplant it out there. Um, I'm also growing some Japanese maple. This one over here. 
It's looking a little sad. I'm unsure exactly what's going on with it, but it, it's got new growth, so I'm just going to leave it be because I transplanted from the ground. And then this is kind of where my propagation bed area is. Um, we just put in the drip irrigation, so still trying to fine tune it. Um, but here are some of my Japanese seedling that's growing. Can you see it? There's a couple right here. I plant them all along here so I can monitor and watch them. But they, I mean, they grow really good from seed. I've lost some, so it's not 100%, but hey, it's better than getting them at the store for like, the cheapest one I found at the store, which is grafted, is about $35, and they're like little tiny. They look sad, like they're gonna die on you once you buy it to $300. So here's another one that's grown from its own root. So this one I think is about, I wanna say three years. Look at the different color variation on just this one. The new growth is pushing out, which gives it that red color. These are all new growth. And then these are the old growth. I think this is blood good. This one is blood good. This one is blood good, I believe. But it's weird because they were this color and then they started to turn this color. Kind of greenish, I'm not sure why. Because I thought all blood goods stay red and then they turn bright, bright red in the fall time. But mine, for some reason, are changing color. And I don't know if maybe because it came from seed and see just like kids they don't they aren't exact duplicate clone of the parent they are you know they have the parent genes but they're their own individual individual <laughs> so that's the same way with plants even if it came from the mother plant the seed itself there might be some kind of variegation to them so that could be the case over here and then of course i have lots of young ones over here growing And there's another cone flower over here. Look at this one. This one's pretty. It's like orange. Here's another Veronica that I propagated from the main plant. This one's kind of doing the same. See how it's pushing up new growth from the base? And then over here, it's kind of floppy. So, again, what I probably will do, come in, crop it. Give it a good haircut and then let the new ones take over. And my summer is super long, so it'll have time to rebound. See it? Now it looks like new growth, like spring started all over again. This is my limelight hydrangea that I'm training into a standard, but it doesn't look like, I don't know if we had a really bad windstorm one day, so it's definitely not straight and upright like I would like it to be. So on Saturday, I'm gonna have my husband help me because I think the root system is gonna be pretty tedious to dig up. So he's gonna help me dig it up just so I can sit it upright so that it grows correctly. This is verbena. Aren't they pretty? They're so delicate. And then my rose over here. This one, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's Floribunda for sure because it has clusters. And here's a spent flower. So I'm going to cut that one right there and then still keep the other ones because they're still blooming. So basically deadhead, you know, you want to get rid of the spent flower so that the plant would spend more energy in giving you more flowers and produce more blooms for you versus spending all that energy to having the flower go to seed. See these little pods underneath the rose when the petal falls off? Those pods in there? The plant will send energy to seed it. And then once that happens, 
you won't have so much energy into your flower. Here's another salvia. This one's a little bit floppy, but it's pretty. I like it. I can't remember what this plant is. The bad thing about propagation, I'm not the best at keeping track of all my plants. So sometimes I plant something in there and then I can't remember what it is until it flowers and bloom. Um, this one I propagated from the mother plant. But this is the color of rose that I wish my Rio Samba would be and that it would stay that way, like the sunset orange. But the Rio Samba, which I did a video on, the Rio Samba in itself is an amazing rose because it gives you all the color and vari uh, variations of different color going from, you know, orange to yellow to pink. And it's just so pretty to have around. If you can have just one rose, I would recommend that one just because it gives you so many color interest. And then this here is my lupine. Lupine. Lupin. Um, it is ginormous like it's actually five feet tall it's about as tall as I am and I'm not I'm not saying that I'm super tall but I'm at least five foot and it reaches my head which I don't know where again like I said where people get their small dainty one but I think I prefer that than this huge big ginormous one and that one I did from seed I had a whole package of seed and only one survived and it was that one um, a major hummingbird attraction, you guys. Vermillionaire. Kufia. This one is from Proven Winner. Hummingbirds love them. And actually, they were here a couple of days ago checking on them. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So they're annuals. They're not supposed to come back, but I think because I mulch them so well... They came back for me and actually they are super easy at propagation I'm all about promoting propagation because it's so easy to do it and you don't have to have a huge propagation bed to do it but it's just really simple I just use plastic containers that I get that when I go to the store or store and buy fruits and vegetables I keep those plastic container and then I put the medium in it and then I just stick cuttings in it this is another pile of topsoil that I have that I'm still using. As I transplant plants from the good bed to the not so good bed, I of course have to dig up the soil. So then I got to replace the soil constantly. This is the main flower bed over here that's still growing. These are salvias. That's my hardy hibiscus. The variegated color one I can't wait to see when they come out it's gonna be really pretty oh let me show you this see okay so look here is another yarrow right there that I propagated and this one is upright but it's in kind of the crummier soil so you know she might be uh, Lauren garden answer might be correct it could be that it doesn't like to be loved like some of my plants, they have to be loved. Look at this, another one of those bugs on my flower. Can you see it? Oh, there it goes, flying off. Here's this one. Let's we'll see if it will stay or if it will fly off. See it? But aren't they pretty? And these are bee balm. Bee balms are pretty. So all my color scheme is more of like purplish, pinkish, except for a couple of reds here and there. That is a um, butterfly bush. Really pretty. I really enjoy the butterfly bush. So I just do a quick tour. Here's another salvia that looks pretty spent. So I think I'm gonna go in and cut it back to here. This one doesn't have as good growth underneath, so I'm just gonna do a soft pruning at the tip just so it can promote new growth and new flowers for me. And that's all 
all you have to do to deadhead. It's no, it's not a rocket scientist. You don't, you know, just do it. And then once you get more comfortable with it, it's pretty easy. I just take my pruning shear, do a quick walk, cut what needs to be cut, trim what needs to be trimmed. Look at my calla lilies. Aren't they pretty? This one's really pretty, but it's been eaten up by the June bugs. They are officially starting. I saw three today. Yesterday I saw only one. So I gotta put traps out for them so they don't eat my flowers. This is a oak leaf hydrangea right there. You can see it's starting to bloom and flower. Isn't that pretty? And this one will stay white. It won't change color. See that small abutilon right there? So what I'm planning is when I transplant the other one in the other flower bed, I'm going to put them around this one. So there'll be a cluster of them. Here's more of uh, the butterfly bush. And then these are my hydrangea over here. This is the macrophilia, the big mop head ones. Aren't they pretty? They're looking nice and they're coming out beautifully. I struggle with it for the longest time because some people say it needs part sun, but I garden in zone 8A in Georgia. To be honest, it almost needs like one hour of sun and that's about it because even where it's at now, which is underneath this huge big tree, I can't remember what this tree is. Um, in the afternoon, when it gets a little bit of sun from this area, because the sun set over here, they wilt really bad. So I have to give it extra water, but I think it would almost be okay if it was in complete shade with just dapple sunlight, because they wilt really bad. Look at this. Look how big this one is. Isn't it beautiful? It's like almost as big as my head. The blue color is so beautiful. So, so I planted this over here um, because of this huge big tree. It gives so much shade. Most of my other plants require full sun, but we have so much heat and humidity. That's why I guess they call it hot lanta. But it gets so hot. Most of the plants, even though it says full sun, ooh, that sun scorched them good. Here's another bee balm. Bee balm is really easy to propagate. So, you know, basically you do your deadheading, but just deadhead it a little bit here where you get a node. And then strip this flowering part, stick that into the ground, and then it'll root itself. Here's my little Japanese maple right here. I hope that it'll grow big and tall and beautiful underneath here. Now this one... Over here is a variegated color, you can see. But I think technically it's blue, but I treated it so that it would turn pink. Because I didn't want all blue. So that's why it's got some pink, some blue, some in between. Some doesn't even know what color it wants to be. But it's still really pretty, so it gives me different, different uh, flowers and colors to look at in my garden. Over here is just by the mailbox. Again, this pink rose. I still can't decide if I really love it. You see it? I mean, a rose is a rose. It's still a rose, and I love rose, but I'm not sure if I'm in love with it. But while I wait for all my other ones that I'm in love with, here's my uh, Double Delight. It's Struggle. It struggled for like, it's been in this flower bed for like three years. I finally amended this flower bed. So now it's actually loving me that's sitting out more than just one shoot a year. And I think this one is um, Pope John Paul or something. It's the white flower. It's pretty. It's very fragrant. But it struggles a lot with the um, black spots. And then... This red one, I can't remember what it is, but it's really pretty. More bee balm, looking at the bee, loving its bee balm plant. 
And actually the bee balm, this color against the salvia is really pretty. Take a look at it. See it? Like the color coordination. I don't do color coordination. I'm just not very good with it. I don't have the eye for it. But this two color, I think it's really pretty. And then my hardy hibiscus over here gives a different kind of color with its uh, contrast in the leaves. Everything else is green except for that one. Look at that bee. It's like trying to completely submerge into the bee balm. It's loving it. I was actually going to come out and deadhead some of the bee balm thinking that it's done and spent. Look at this weird one. Look, it's like already done and spent, right? But then look, there's like another one inside of it. That's so weird. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Because I think most of them is like this, you know, they flower out. And then they lose their little petals and then they just... Look, can you see them like this one? When it loses this pink, I don't know what you call them, these little pink flowering, then it just becomes kind of like a spore spot. But this one, it like flower, and then there's another flower within the flower. Hmm. Can you see that? That's so weird. Interesting, and sometimes you'll get some that might be a little bit off. But that's okay. It's still pretty. We're all sometimes a little bit off anyways, right? We're all unique in our own way. This is Zena. She enjoys being outside and in my garden. Ooh, you got dirty, Zena. Hopefully that's not poop. She loves rolling in poop. And that's kind of a brownish color. Ooh, not Georgia red clay right there. Well, you guys, I think that's about it. I mean, it doesn't look like a lot of things needing to be deadhead. So I might just end this. Oh, uh, see, this is another yarrow that I planted over here. It looks like it's spent. So maybe I will deadhead this yarrow. There's only one little good looking flower right here. But everything else looks pretty spent. So I want to go in, do the thing I do, and cut them. Give them a hard prune job. Nothing to it, you guys. Don't be scared. And then as you can see, new shoots are coming out with the base. See it? New shoots are going to come out and replace the ones that I cut. Nothing to it. Let's see what the back looks like. Look at this plant. It's a prickly plant. I can't remember. But when you buy bouquets at the store, they stick them in here as a filler. They're really pretty. I mean, they're really unique. I can't remember what the name of it is. Here's my raspberry. You can see I'm getting some raspberry. Yay! Butterfly bush. This one's pretty massive, but not as massive as this one over here. So it doesn't really look like too many things have to be deadhead. Well, let me show you this huge, big bee balm. 
So my name, there are different varieties, of course, of bee balm. The ones that I have in the front where the mailbox is, is like, I think about 12 to 15 inches. The one I have back here, this is where I have my rose, uh, not rose, my apple tree. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm going to show you that dragonfly, but I think the dog scared away. Look at this bee balm. Like, I'm literally standing up, and it's, like, right underneath my chin. So it's almost five feet, but look at it. It's I think it's red. It's going to be red when it comes out. That'll be exciting, but it's so tall. Like, geez louise, I need, like, own spot for it. So this area is kind of brand new. Other than planting the apple tree, everything else I just planted this spring. A lot of weed in it as well so I have to come back here and do quite a big weed eating festival which I'm not in the mood for over here this one is another hardy hibiscus but this is midnight marvel which is what the picture of my profile is you guys it is amazing and I'm actually propagating some more of this so I'm waiting for it to flower and then cut back some and then propagating from there and then, let's see. So nothing over there needs to be pruned back. What needs to be pruned back is my grass. Look at it. Woo! About as tall as I am. Not really, but this is my pomegranate tree that I planted just like two days ago. This is grapefruit tree. Looking good and healthy. You guys, I am super excited about this Bloom Sweet Grapefruit that I purchased from McKenzie's Farm in South Carolina. I am super excited. And I also have two more trees that are coming. So I bought fastgrowingtree.com. I bought it actually, I bought it nine days ago and it's supposed to be one to two days shipping. I called them today finally stating, hey, FedEx has not delivered my tree within the one to two days. I called them actually three days ago and they said give it one or two more days and it should come to you and it still hasn't come and this weekend is a holiday and I'm like look that plant has been in its box for over nine days and no water and no sunlight. Spending that much money you want to make sure you get it as soon as possible so it can be watered and get some sunlight. So I think they're going to try to investigate it on their side while they send me um, two new ones that I order. And then I think they gave me a discount off of my order because both trees that I purchased was over $100. So uh, hopefully it will turn out great. It's not their fault that FedEx lost track of the package. At least that's on my end. That's how I look at it because the tree company sent it via FedEx and it got to the FedEx center. And then there, it's been at that center for like, I don't know, six, seven days. And it still says it's on, in route. And I'm like, well, yeah, in route is one thing. Getting to where it needs to be is another thing. So once I get it, I will show you guys. And I'm super excited. I bought a mango tree and an avocado tree. Both of which cannot be grown in zone eight. So I'm gonna plant it in a pot. Uh, and then bring it inside. But look at all the pollen uh, pollinators. Look at all those bees on this lavender. So this is a different kind of lavender than the one that I have on my driveway. This um, form is more upright. See how it doesn't trail over like the other one uh, previously I showed you by the sidewalk. And then this tall looking um, weed. It looks like weed, but it's actually asparagus. For those of you who don't know what asparagus looks like, they come straight up from the ground and then you pick them and then you saute them mm, or you grill them, so good. But I only had like two or three of them so I let it grow so it can get some more seeds. You can see the seed pods on them. That's the little flowering thing. Those are seed pods so I'm hoping that it will self propagate which it has because I have a couple more over there. So this is basically my garden bed. I have tomatoes. I have a mayor's lemon which is over there which like you guys it's healthy looking now I thought it had completely died back 
and I was gonna have to dig it up but it send up new shoots from the base like from the roots itself not even from the base let me see if I can get a closer look hang on I'll take it off of its stand just so you guys can see look at this isn't that crazy it's not even sending shoots from the base well I guess this is the base but I mean it's literally like down down there look and here's another little one right here from the roots almost you see it I'm going to just cover it up because that's how it seems to like it. So I got two new shoots to replace these old stumpy ones. The only sad thing is if I leave it in the ground, I think it's going to always die back and always send up new shoots. And that's a lot of stress to put on your plant. I need to come and garden. See, weed eat. But this is what I'm going to do today too. I don't think that would be too interesting, you guys, to watch that. So I'm going to probably do that off camera. Unless you tell me you want to watch me sweat and weed eat in this hum humid Georgia weather. Look at those tiny little ones. I think these are supposed to be sweet cherry tomatoes, which my daughter loves. So that's why I got them. And look, you can see all of them over there. And then this one is supposed to be a regular size one. My, my neighbor actually has a couple growing. So she usually does the tomatoes. I do the jalapeno peppers. The zucchinis and I'm doing of course the lemon and citrus stuff anyways that's about it you guys um, like I said now I'm gonna probably spend mo most of my time over here you can see where all the weeds are so I'm gonna be out here plucking and doing my thing and weed eating I hope you guys have a great day get out and enjoy the weather the Sun is not so bad today so it's pretty cloudy. Oh, let me show you my patio. Here's my patio. Here's my Rio Samba highlight of all my roses right now. Robinia, isn't that pretty? I don't know why they are so big over here, but in the front they are lacking a little bit. This is a navel orange that I purchased at Home Depot. And then another Mayer's lemon over here that I purchased because I thought the one I planted in the ground has officially died on me. It's doing good. Hopefully it'll bear fruit this fall. Oh, sorry. So see that little black weird spot over there? I was looking at it to see what the heck that is. And then I have over here my green onions that I come out and get whenever I need some. Another tomato plant and then my blueberry. I hope you guys have fun gardening as much as I do. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.